Hello, I'm Brandon Kanafi. I'm the team lead for 3Pi Robotics at U of H. Um, this is a video about a beginning task. I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit it all in one video, but we'll see. Uh, so, yeah, I'm doing the beginner task. I'm going to move through it pretty fast. Uh, so if you have any questions, you can leave it in the comments or we can talk about it at one of our meetings. Okay, let's get started. Okay, first I'd like to start out with some back in background information about uh, compiling and uh, bugging um, your 3Pi and other things like that. Uh, first of all, whenever you're using the 3Pi, you have to uh, include this. Uh, that's just like basically background coding that's necessary for you to code on the 3Pi. Um, and so this is my namer code um, uh, that I've written. Uh, basically it's going to clear the LCD screen and then it's going to print uh, brand into the LCD screen. Go to the second row of the LCD screen and print my last name. And then it'll wait for me to press any button and then it'll delay 200 milliseconds and then it'll clear the screen, end of code. Uh, when you write a code like this, the first thing you'd want to do is you want to go to build, build solution, and then I'll run it, and if you have no errors, you're good, and then you're going to want to plug in your, your 3Pi, okay, and then you want to go to debug, and start without debugging. And you have to make sure your 3Pi I... 3 pies on and plugged in or this will happen that's what you should get it's build succeeded you're all good and now my 3 pi is showing my name and waiting for you to press the button I'll show you a short video of that now and when you implement this code this is what should happen all right, and this is my program that shows a, the button letter that's pressed. Uh, so basically what I have here is clears the screen and then the screen will display uh, press any button uh, until I press one of uh, the three buttons A, B, or C. Um, and then I have a series of if statements and each of the corresponding if statements uh, prints its own letter so for example I'm saying if X is equal to uh, button A it does this part of the program it'll clear the screen print button A and then wait till it's released and then it'll clear the screen again and then it'll loop back around Printing, in, press any button, and then it'll it'll wait once again until I'm I do press any button, and it'll display the corresponding button. And when this code is implemented, this is how the button press should work. See that? And see button A. All right. Okay, for the next bit of code, I am showing you. The how to um, get the uh, battery millivoltage off and display it on the screen. Um, so it's pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, this repeats every second, showing you exactly what the uh, millivoltage is each second you do that. Um, and basically, just use the print long function uh, that's used usually to click uh, integer values and just read battery multivillage 3 pi. It's pretty simple. I'll show you what that looks like right now. Okay, and when you implement the battery reading code uh, for the millivolts that this is what it should look like. Okay, so this is the program that turns the LED or uh, a LED or both the LEDs um, on and off four times. In my case, I turned both of them on and off um, four times. Uh, so first my program starts by creating energy C equal to one 
um, and that will come in use later and then it clears the screen just in case there's anything on the screen and then it prints LED lighter uh, on the entire screen and then it waits for me to press any button and then it loops through this uh, four times um, it clears the screen again um, it turns on so and this is the pretty crucial part these this is how you turn on and off the green and red LED lights uh, the one being true and this is how you turn them off zero being false so they're off so it turns them on it prints on on the screen and then uh, it it continues like that for a second and then it clears the screen turns them both off prints off and then continues like that for a second and it goes through this entire cycle four times thus turning them on and off four times and then it clears it and the program ends uh, I, um, that's that's really it for the LED lighter okay this is the, the LED code implemented on the 3 Pi. Uh, right now it's waiting for me to press any button, any of these three buttons, and then it will begin flashing uh, the LEDs on the bottom. Uh, my green LED is actually kind of not working, so it's probably not going to work properly. Um, but here we go. So it just lit once. There's a second time, a third, and a fourth. And the code has ended. Uh, what you also want to see in the code is how the LCD screen is reacting to the LEDs being on and off. So right, it's telling you it's on, now it's off, it's on, it's off, and so on. All right, that was the L LED lighting code. Okay, this is the uh, code that makes the three pi spin four seconds at one-fourth speed um, so basically what I'm doing here is clearing the screen just in case there's anything on it and I called this code spinner and so I print that to the screen and then it delays two seconds it clears the screen and then right here it's I'm telling uh, I'm telling it to print uh, to print press any button on my screen um, and then it goes into this while loop and it waits for me uh, to press a button before it does the um, main part of the code. Um, once I press any button, it clears the screen and it prints spinning, delays a second to get your finger away from the um, the three pi, and then I've set um, both motors to 64 and negative 64, so one's going in the forward direction and the backward direction. And 64 is one fourth of 250, and 250 is the max speed of the 3 pi. And then I have it delay four seconds, and I set both motors uh, to zero. Delay one more second, clear the screen, and then I just have it repeat, so I can continue to do this over and over again. That's basically uh, the spinning code. Um, now I'll show you what that looks like on the 3 pi. Alright, this is the code for the 3 pi that implements the spinning for 4 seconds. So right now it's just telling me what, what I called the code. Um, it's waiting for me to press the button and it should spin for 4 se seconds. And it comes out of that spinning right there, you see. Okay, 4 seconds have gone by. Now the code, I can press it again and we'll do the same thing. Yep, that's it. Alright, this is the code that I call Turner. Uh, it's basically the one telling you to turn left, right, and then back to where you started. Um, first I've started out just by displaying what code it is when you turn on the 3 pi Turner and then delay, uh, then it moves on. Okay, the next thing I tell it to do is just for wait to me, uh, wait for me to press any button and it's displaying all that information and then I press a button. Uh, it tells you what it's doing, it delays a second, and then it turns uh, left for a tenth of a second. It stops there for half a second, and then I'm telling it to turn right for 337.5 uh, milliseconds, and I just found that number by experimentation to make it turn like an exact counterclockwise -clock right, uh, like it facing east, if it were a compass. And then I 
again by experimentation uh, I found to make it turn back to left to find its initial position uh, I made it turn to 273.5 milliseconds and that usually gets me back to where I've started um, and that's basically it for the code it's pretty simple it's just a bunch of turning and timing and now I'll show you what that looks like okay this is the code that implements all the turns left and right and back to the, your initial position All right, so let me start this code back right here so right now it's just telling you which code I've called it and now it's waiting for me to press any button to implement uh, the majority of the code right, and as you can see basically did it and now it's just waiting me to press it again and I can just keep doing this over and over again alright that's basically it okay now I'm gonna show you um, the code that I called the sound maker I've included this one and this one because I consider them very similar so I've just made them one code alright let me show you that right now um, so basically I first define integer as a, uh, integer x um, that will be used later I clear the screen just in case there's anything left on the screen I print sound I print sound maker uh, first and second row and then I delay uh, three seconds clear the screen and then I tell it to print press any button and wait for me to press any button uh, and then I'm telling it to play, play a frequency of 800 Hertz for five seconds for uh, at volume 15 which is the loudest um, that's basically how this works you just play frequency and then you you list the specs of Hertz duration and volume um, and then this is for uh, the second part of the code where it tells you to play for five seconds uh, I've done a time reset uh, it's not exactly necessary but I'm more using it to display the time on the screen so um, the user knows how much time has gone by and what to expect so I'm telling it uh, x is equal to the amount of time that has been uh, since this time reset and it will continue for 500, uh, 5,000 milliseconds, which is five seconds. Um, the the three pi prints playing, and then it tells you the seconds it's been playing right here. That's basically what this code is. And then once it hits five seconds, uh, it stops playing. Th this is not exactly necessary. I've just added that just as a precaution. And then the code ends. But basically, all you really need is this. It, it it's all the information that you need to play frequency you don't necessarily need to stop playing and I'll show you exactly what that looks like okay so I've put in the code that plays a uh, frequency for five seconds on my 3 pi. so I'm just gonna reset it okay, right now I just called the code sound maker so that's what it's displaying um, now just waiting to press any button and um, as soon as I do that, let's start playing. And as you see, it was counting there, and at that fifth se second, it stopped immediately, so it didn't display the five. Then it stopped playing. All right, and that's it. Okay, this is uh, the I like to call it the timing code or the timer. Uh, it's the one that displays the amount of time that's passed by uh, for the 3 pi. Um, so basically what I did is I turn it on, I clear the screen, I display what code it is, and then I move on, I tell it to wait for me uh, to where I get to set the timer. Um, it, permit, uh, it prints timing, timing now, um, and then it does a time reset and and so when you do a time reset and then you get get milliseconds it's the time difference from when you first done this and you do get milliseconds each time not since it's been on or anything like that so every time you do time reset it resets the clock its internal clock um, well right now since I've done a time reset this time zero and then it's doing this for I for 
uh, as long as it can, really. Um, it just continues to time in, and I've I've told it to print in milliseconds and seconds within this code. Uh, if you want to take a look at that, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, right now I've implemented the timing code on my 3Pi. Um, so I'll just take you along as it goes. So right now it's just displaying what code it is. And it's waiting for me to press a button, uh, any button. And it's saying timing now. And after this message disappears is when it starts timing um, how long, how much time has gone by. Uh, and as you can see, it's displaying in both milliseconds and seconds. And again, uh, it only starts the time after uh, after the timing now message has disappeared. Okay, that's it. And that's basically it uh, for the timing and for the beginner task. One last thing I'd like to tell you guys about uh, is the great resources on the Plolu website. So you just go to plolu.com and type in 3pi. It's right there for me. Um, just go to this first link. Uh, go to resources. And then uh, you can go to the library's user guide and command references. I found them very uh, both very helpful when I was first learning how to program uh, the 3Pi and just C in general. Uh, but besides that, if you want to learn, uh, if you're kind of confused about uh, programming, uh, I would just suggest you to uh, look up stuff on Google, uh, Stack Overflow. <clears throat> any of those resources would be great. So if you have any questions about any of that, uh, we can talk it, about it in our next meeting or you can just leave it in the comments below. Alright, see you guys.